Friends, welcome to our Ash Wednesday service and I pray that you will be able to uh, listen and take part in the service at some point during the day, whether that's in the morning or in the evening when you've come in from work or at some point in the next day or so as we begin this season of Lent. And as we begin Lent this year, 2021, it is almost, of course, a year since we first went into this lockdown season as our country and our world and our community have been so impacted by the terror, the horror of COVID-19. I hope that this Lent we will be able to do a number of things, that we will be able to grieve and lament all that we have lost, all those whom we have lost. But also begin as we uh, focus on the cross and then as we look to the glories of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on Easter Day, and as spring itself begins to come, that we may also, we pray, be able to look forward with some hope as the vaccines give us uh, hope and protection that we may be able to emerge from this season into a new season of release and joy. But at this time in Lent, it is perhaps going to be particularly poignant, a season of transition we pray for us, lamenting and also looking forward in hope. So let me begin by reading uh, from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we hope and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
the collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 51, and Katie is reading this for us. Psalm 51, for the director of music, a Psalm of David. When the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. We're now going to sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, sung by the Cathedral Choir of St Andrew's Sydney and then Katie will do our second reading from Revelation chapter 7.
Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 to 17. After this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let me pray for us as I begin our sermon today. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts in all our hearts be now and always acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Now it's a picture, I suspect, that makes us cringe. The uh, firebrand preacher clad in uh, black robes, thundering from the pulpit and gesticulating wildly as he implores the congregation, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? It seems a hopelessly old-fashioned and incomprehensible image from a bygone era. But while the mannerisms and the attire may not be appropriate, nor perhaps the tone of voice, yes, it needs some explanation, but the message is as relevant today as it ever was. And so I must still eat, ask each one of us as we begin this uh, Lent, this new season of Lent, in these strange and unsettling times, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There are many ways that the Bible chooses to describe the brokenness of our relationship with God, caused by our sin and our rebellion. And alongside every description of that brokenness, there's a corresponding description of how that brokenness has been put right and restored, not by us, but by the gracious initiative of God. And all of these ways of restoration are concentrated like an hourglass or a sand timer on the cross of Christ. Some of the pictures are picked up in that great hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, that we sang a few moments ago. Those words, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. They're all pictures of what Christ has done for us at the cross. So for instance, the Bible describes us as being captive to our sin. And that picture is put right at the cross of Christ as Christ breaks the power and penalty of sin. Christ ransoms us. We're redeemed from our slavery to sin as we repent and trust in him and in his death for us. Another picture is of rescue. Jesus is the saviour of the world and it's at the cross that that salvation is focused. Elsewhere, the Bible describes us as guilty, condemned, facing God's wrath, his right anger and justice. At the cross, Jesus pays the price. 
He atones for our sin. We are justified. We're declared legally righteous, innocent in the courtroom of God. As the song goes that we'll sing a little later, it is at the cross where God's wrath and mercy meet. You see, way back in the Garden of Eden, uh, one of the immediate consequences of Adam and Eve's disobedience and rebellion was that they felt shame. Shame between each other, so they covered themselves, as well as shame with God and bringing shame on God, so they hid themselves from him. At the cross of Christ, as we see today, that shame is covered. So going to our uh, New Testament reading from Revelation, the Apostle John is given that glimpse into the throne room of heaven. And what does he see? Revelation 7 verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. You see, John sees this multitude of Christ's people who have persevered through suffering, persecution, tribulation, and who now, verse 14, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb which on the surface doesn't seem like a good way of making a robe white by washing it in lamb's blood. So what's going on? I think uh, partly we're more squeamish in these days than they were then. I know I'm rather squeamish. I remember uh, some years ago watching a fabulous documentary on BBC4 called uh, Photographing Africa. And uh, Harry Hook is a photographer who captured on camera the lives and rituals and lifestyle of the nomadic pastoral tribes of East Africa. I confess I had to turn over briefly as he recorded an initiation ceremony for young men who had to slit the artery of one of their precious cattle and then drink its lifeblood. I know I'm too sanitized to it, which is why we're uncomfortable perhaps with this picture of being made right with God by being washed in the blood of the Lamb. So what's going on? Well, ever since humanity lost its place in the Garden of Eden, the only way to approach God has been through sacrifice, and it still is. In Genesis 3, Cain and Abel offered sacrifices. When Noah got out of the ark, he sacrificed an animal to the Lord. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all made sacrifices. But it was at Passover, and then after, as God gave his people the law, that the meaning of sacrifice became clearer. And God gave them those very precise instructions, and they all involved the killing of an animal, and particularly the shedding of its blood to cleanse the people from their sin. The symbolism isn't particularly obscure or complex. Here's what your sins deserve, is the very simple sign, the big signpost, blazing across the scene as the high priest stabbed the knife into the neck of the bull or goat or lamb. There was no attempt to be subtle. It's simple and yet terrifying. Our sin is so serious that sin always results in death and blood is the symbol of life. And so if sin brings death, and if you want to be forgiven and not have to pay the ultimate price yourself for your sin, something is going to have to die in your place. There is no forgiveness without blood being shed. The sacrificial system that God gave to his people was a brutal reminder of that reality. Sin brings death, Forgiveness requires sacrifice. So when Jesus is having his last supper with his disciples, those words are especially poignant, as the Gospels record. Then Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus called it the new covenant 
because all the other sacrifices over the years under the old sacrificial system were merely foreshadowing and looking forward to Jesus' death, the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. After all, how could a mindless goat pay the price of our conscious, willful rebellion against our Creator? It wasn't even aware of what was happening to it. But Jesus was. The Gospel writers are very concerned to show us that Jesus was a righteous and willing sacrifice, that he knew all along that this was his purpose in coming. Such that the centurion who executed Jesus and then saw how he died declared, surely this was a righteous man. And in doing so, he unknowingly declared that Jesus was an acceptable and worthy sacrifice. As Peter later writes, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. But there's another image that's combined with sacrifice, and it's that of washing and wearing clothes. As I said earlier, washing in blood doesn't usually make clothes white, but the lamb's blood does exactly that. Back in Isaiah, do you remember, the prophet cries out to God because he realises that his and the people's best efforts to please God are merely like filthy rags. Now in Revelation, this multitude of believers in the throne room of heaven are only there not because they brought their own clean rags or have cleaned them by their own efforts. Rather, they've been washed in the blood of Christ, the perfect lamb who takes away, washes away the sins of the world. I love um, before and after photos, and we've seen some pretty dramatic ones in recent months of our normally crowded cities, now empty in lockdown. Or there's the uh, before and after photographs in something like uh, DIY SOS or garden makeover or uh, diet plan adverts before and after. Well, this before and after is by wearing robes being washed in the blood of the lamb. Listen to the Apostle Paul writing God's word to the Corinthians. And this is for all believers. This is all of us, as Paul is very keen to point out. He writes this, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor home sexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That is a wonderful before and after. It's a wonderful before and after picture of how all of us once were before we turned to Christ and how anyone, anyone who turns to Christ will appear washed in the blood of the Lamb. And this washing isn't some optional extra for really keen Christians. Listen to Jesus again. Uh, this is again on the last night of his life. It's earlier than the uh, Last Supper. The disciples are all gathered round, but no one has been servant-hearted enough to do the job that servants were expected to do of washing each other's feet. And so Jesus does it. But when he comes to Peter, he can't stand it. This is how John records the conversation. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And he doesn't mean just wash with water. He means with his blood. If Jesus doesn't wash us, we'll never be clean and we will never get to experience the throne room of heaven. So are you, as it were, relying on your own cleanness 
the cleanness that comes from our so-called good lives. How will you fare when you come before the perfect purity and cleanness and holiness of God? We will all on our own look very grubby indeed. Our only hope is if we are cleansed, washed in the blood of the Lamb. So as we go into this Lent, I'd like us to remember a few things. First, a picture to hold on to in our hearts and our minds, to strengthen our faith in the trials and tribulations of life, this picture of a multitude of God's people wearing white robes, washed in the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross. I'd also like us to remember a promise to offer to others. Please can you think of another brother or sister in Christ to contact this week who may be struggling, maybe with a call, a card, uh, maybe an email or a Facebook contact, to encourage them with this promise of heaven for all who persevere. And then the third thing, a pledge to pass on. Maybe this Lent you'll have the opportunity to use these verses with a friend who's not yet a Christian to pass on to them what it is that Christians believe about heaven and how Jesus can wash people clean from all our failure, our sin, by his death for us on the cross. One of the great clarion calls of Revelation is that all are promised great suffering, but Christians are also promised great security. And then finally, please remember that we have a place to praise God for. We have the certain hope of heaven to come. And don't we need to hear that in these days? It is something for which we can give great thanks and praise to God. The gains of heaven will more than compensate for the losses of earth. As I close, I'm going to read the final verses again from that reading from Revelation. And then we'll say a confession together and listen after that to a new song called Creation Awaits by Emu Music. But first of all, let's listen to this picture of heaven. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. Let's confess our sins together now. The words are on the screen and pick up this very same language. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God Almighty, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Creation awaits. Enjoy this song. I am alive 
saved by your sacrifice. Death overcome, glory dispels the night. You call the lifeless to wake from death to For our prayers, we're going to use uh, 
an ancient form of prayer called the litany. Please join in with the responses. Let us pray. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Lord, our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten Peter and Ruth, our bishops, and all who minister with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives, they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth our Queen, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. And you, the High Court of Parliament, and all the ministers of the Crown with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts to you. Lord, have mercy. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Amen. We're going to uh, sing again. We're going to sing, Come and See. Come and see, come and see, come and see the King of Love. See the purple robe and crown of thorns he wears. Soldiers mock, 
ruler sneer as he lifts the cruel cross. Lone and friendless now, he climbs towards the hill. We worship at your feet, where wrath and mercy meet, and the guilty world is washed by love's pure stream. For as he was made sin, oh help me take it in, deep wounds of love cry out, Father forgive.
now say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You will know that we cannot uh, sadly share communion at present for the simple reason that we cannot commune, we cannot be together, and we lament not being able to do so. We can still, though, remember and rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ and his act of his giving and shedding of his body and blood for us. Jesus' words and actions at the Last Supper remind us of that. And of course, it enables us to look forward to a great time when we will be able to be together in this building, in the church centre, sharing together and celebrating Christ's death for us. But nevertheless, let's remember and rejoice in those words from Mark's Gospel. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve to celebrate Passover. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, Jesus replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And so we give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and ask him to be with us now as we pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, 
We ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Lord, in these days of Lent, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. And we bring our prayers together with the words and prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and I
a final prayer. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him daily this Lent. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.